everybody, and welcome back to The New Nasty Boys. I'm your co-host this morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you decide to listen to this thing, Billy DeVore, and sitting next to me, as always, is... Chris Weir. Oh, he was ready. Oh, I was going to jump the gun there, <laughs> caught a gnat, we're off. <laughs> Do you squash it, or did you just, you just swat him away? I put it in my palm and didn't look back. <laughs> Let the Lord decide its fate. Yeah. Oh, boy, we're going to get, uh, this, uh, what is that, FEMA? Not FEMA, FEMA's disaster relief. Who am I thinking of? Not the SPCA, they adopt pets. Uh, PETA. PETA, yes. Yes, okay. I thought they're all going to come. <laughs> they're all, they're SPCA, gonna... PETA, FEMA. <laughs> a femur bone's going to come here. <laughs> a, and, a, and a lima. And a lima. And lemur. A lemur. Lemur, the only drug, uh, the only drug, Jesus Christ, the only animal that gets itself high. Did you know that? I didn't know that. What yeah. about koalas? I've, koalas have gonorrhea, right? Um, I don't. I thought they got high off a bamboo. Or I think of pandas. Maybe they get pandas, but the lemur it'll be in the wild, and what it'll do is it hunts for this certain bug. Because and it, then it smokes crack. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it said the bug is his plug. Right. And then he gets the rocks, and then he's like, <sighs> and then just ends up, you know, sleeping and hanging out. No, but it's like, like it's a bug, and he like agitates it, and then it releases this this like toxin oh. that gets the lemur high and he trips for like 18 hours. I love it. That's why lemurs are the best. Cheesing. Cheesing. Just ah. <laughs> Love it. Just there. Just pass out under a tree with like two boxes of Cheez-Its and just go into town. That's great. That's yeah. probably like my favorite South Park. The the Kenny uh, Cheesing. Oh my god. That one is excellent. That was epic Kenny. I love your titties, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this cheese down is mine. <laughs> oh Oh man, so fucking great! And then when Randy gets in, mm -hmm. oh, anything with Randy going off the rails is mm -hmm. classic. Oh, that was good. Uh, what's uh, Mr. Marsh? Because he was doing the cheesing, oh. cheesing with him. That was a good one. Yeah, it was great. So, how was your week? <laughs> I just watched South Park. <laughs> just watched South Park. Uh, no, it was good. It was. Uh, I, I was at Go Bananas. It was really fun. Got to work with uh, Ryan Singer, one of the all-time greatest comics to come out of Ohio. Yeah. Um, it was super fun working with him, and then Lena Beamish, also well from uh, Kentucky. Uh, it was a great time. We're at Bananas. She, she's out. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's a great show. It was really fun. Uh, we even commented on it. It's like a great uh, mix of comics. We all uh, kind of gelled well. Yeah. That's great. And it was Singer's birthday, too, on Sunday. There you go. So I got a, we all had cake. We had an Oreo Ooh. ice cream cake. Uh, Loved it. He, he strikes me as an ice cream cake guy, for sure. I think, well, his parents, I'm pretty sure, brought it out for him. But it was probably, they knew. Like, that might have been his favorite. It was my favorite. That's all really. <laughs> they actually checked it with you first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, hey, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> Better be called, dude. Well, because he has such an epic bit about milkshakes. So oh, yeah. think about it. Ice cream cake is just, you know, a form of a milkshake, kind of. Yeah. In a cake form. Yeah, we had a milkshake with forks. <laughs> cool. Oh, a fork shake. Yeah, fork shake. So we're eating cake at the bar and had a great time. Cake at the bar. That's mm -hmm. a great, that is a great album title right there, brother. Mm -hmm. Cake at the bar. By Car Seat Hedrick. Car Seat Hedrick. Oh, another great band. Um... I had a good week. I was in Philly. Went and saw the smile at the Electric Factory. Oh, yeah. Sorry, it's called the what is it? Some music Franklin Music Hall is what it's called now. But the the you know the Philadelphians call it the Electric Factory. Oh god. Uh, saw Tom York and Johnny Greenwood in the Smile, and got to watch Tom York just have small strokes on stage. Jesus, he's dude. just always like oh yeah, how he <laughs> and he's dancing. He's like <laughs> like he has that Joe Cocker <laughs> thing like what. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of... Yeah, um, Joe Cocker was on ketamine. Oh, damn, dude. That's great. Uh, he wouldn't need a friend at that point. It's like, I got my drugs. <laughs> I got my drugs. I'm good. Uh, went and saw the Liberty Bell, took a photo with it, frowning, and posted on the internet that I farted and made a crack on the other side. Oh, Liberty Bell's that stripper, though, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that stripper that uh, Ben Franklin gave the clap to. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Cracked her in twain. <laughs> It was so funny, like, we land and we're driving up, and the first billboard I see is, like, an iceberg and a boat going into it, and it said, be aware of drug-resistant gonorrhea. 
get tested today. And I was like, in the land, in the land of Franklin, this makes the most fucking sense. It really does. It really checks out. I think he probably brought gonorrhea to the States. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. He actually put it on blankets and gave it to Native Americans. It's weird. He brought gonorrhea and baths. So kind of like a, a give-take situation. Honestly, gonorrhea and baths are two of my favorite things. Yeah, they go well together. <laughs> and they go hand in hand. That and ointment. <laughs> Yeah, I love pussing out in the clawfoot tub. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, he gave us bifocals and the unprotected orgy. Yeah, he did. <laughs> what, a, what a truly an inventor. This is a great baseball podcast. <laughs> I love yeah, it. it is. <laughs> oh man, uh, we've been enjoying the All Star break, as short as it may be. Mm -hmm. uh, the home run derby was was fun. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. Uh, I watched I watched most of it. I think, uh, dude, it was so hard to pay attention though. That, uh, right. The camera angle was it was like someone showed me like uh, get, like gave me a cell phone for like a YouTube video. It's like <laughs> here, watch this, and I'm shaking it the whole time. <laughs> It was impossible to pay attention. Yeah. They, 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 I understand, like they're doing tremendous work, and you got to do a lot of stuff on the fly. But, dude, you got to have like two different cameras following different balls, and just kind of like fading in and out. Just, you got to have multiple cameras on the same time, and then yeah. stop showing like the straight-on shot of them, and you just kind of like figure out where the balls go. It, yeah. it was the most unpleasant way to watch a home run derby. <laughs> you know, it's like you know what it's like. It's like watching those uh, TikTok videos. Where it's like a clip of a movie or a TV show on top, and on the bottom it's someone playing a game. Yeah, it was. It feels like that. Yeah, and like I think when we were texting about it, I was like, it almost seems like you need to be able to have multiple TVs to truly watch it. Mm -hmm. Where like you could have, um, like if it's on ESPN, they have ESPN, ESPN U, ESPN Two, ESPN Three. And you could like go to a certain angle mm. and go like, all right, I want a head-on angle. I'm gonna watch that one on ESPN and on ESPN U. I'm gonna watch like the shot tracker, yeah, or or an overhead wide view to see where it's all going. I think they need to have at least three different things like on the screen. Like, why don't you have the panoramic from behind? Yeah, that was a crisp shot. Oh, like, I really enjoyed that. So you can follow pretty much all the balls, and then. Honestly, the, the view of the batter swing isn't as important as where it's going, where you, yeah. want, where you want to follow it. Mm -hmm. So less of the batter, more seeing where it tracks. Yeah. Because they would do the thing where they'd show the batter swinging and then try to show you about where it's going to land and then cut to another ball. It was the most chaotic thing. It made me like uh, motion sickness. Yeah. Like it, trying it, to watch it. And you get all anxious and sweaty. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I got so sweaty just watching. Yeah. And that's just normal TV. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. I was like, I don't know how many calories I burned just going like, oh, where to go? Okay. Which side do I follow? Ah, uh, my neck. And I'm hungry. Yeah, I chafe watching sports. <laughs> That's that would be a great gold bond commercial. Do you chafe while watching other people exercise? <laughs> Do you get irritated playing video games? <laughs> Are you just fat and always sweaty? <laughs> Are you breathing heavy right now? <laughs> Do you are you asking yourself? Do they make a life CPAP machine? <laughs> Gold bond. <laughs> We're selling it. We're pitching it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man, like I think that would work. Uh, Vladdy was great. I thought Randy was gonna pull it out. Mm -hmm. What a fucking cool. Like, he's like after seeing him in the World Baseball Classic and watching the big glove incident live where he signed it. When I was like there, and I was like, holy shit, he's got the big glove, the cowboy boots, and bringing the boots to the home run derby, bringing his kid out and both doing the pose. Yeah. How is he not like, um, like the dude that every baseball fan should be rooting for? Yeah, I just don't think he's like as well known as like what he should be at this point. And I, I was thinking kind of similar things like about what like we were saying. Like these are moments where. Uh, they're developing fans because imagine like being like a kid, like a five, six year old, just watching what was going on there and yeah. just seeing uh, all of that stuff that was going, uh, just hitting like monster home run balls, all the fanfare, all the stuff that was going on. That that's developing mm -hmm. lifelong fans right there. Oh yeah, and like it's crazy that he went like you know he was traded from the Cardinals to the Rays. The Rays aren't a big market, but I mean they are leading the AL East. He should be big. He should be bigger. I think that one day he will. Like, he's always on the tip of my tongue. He's like coolest dude in baseball, mm. and most fans. But I think this was truly his national showcase to be like, 
I'm the fucking best. Yeah, it was a coming out party for people to get to witness like all these uh, players, which is upsetting that the Reds didn't get to participate in that for the most part. No. Uh, seeing Diaz come in there at the end was exciting. Yeah. Also at the same time, a, a little bit irritating because it's almost like, I don't even want you guys to see the Reds. You guys don't deserve mm -mm. the Reds. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You got to find this on your own. Mm -hmm. It's like that band you really, really like, but you don't want them to get too big so so the ticket prices aren't crazy. Yeah, exactly. We're you still know? like kind of indie at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, for me, it was like Tame Impala, like when the second album dropped, I was like, oh shit. Yeah. And then uh, then now it's like 200 bucks to see him, so yeah. fuck. But yeah, um, I was really happy to hear that Ellie turned down the home run derby, though. No, oh, that was awesome. That was a great move. Yeah, so smart. Like, dude, I, I get like, look, Ellie is the most electric player in baseball right now. Hands down. Must see TV every time he's at, at the dish. But... He's going to have so many more opportunities to do this. Yeah. Why, why, like, you know, you've only been up here 33 games. Why, why stress and push yourself mm -hmm. when you could really use that break? Yeah, and I liked uh, how it showed some discipline because I think, like, some of the knocks, the early knocks that he takes are people suggesting that he might be a little too flashy. For whatever reason, he's got, like, an early taste of him. So I think him doing something like that, that very clearly shows, hey, I could have had an opportunity to have a ton of eyes on me put on a, an absolute clinic, uh, but I chose not to. Yeah, I love that for him. And then he's just like, man, I'm going to, let's focus on the rest of the year. And he's just going to make the all-star game from he, from next season for the next 12 to 15 years. Yeah, he's you just, know? yeah, enjoy this time off when you're not going to be in an all-star game. Yeah, and how crazy is it, like, he's now, he's already in a commercial. Dude, that was so wild. Uh, the Mission Impossible oh, yeah. thing. Like, immediately, the, the world just knows who he is. It's, it's no secret now. Uh -uh. Ellie's out there, man. Ellie Dela out or whatever. Ellie Dela is in. Is in. He's Ellie Dela is in. in here. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So I mean, like, I was really happy to hear that. Uh, Alexis. You know, he had a good outing. Gave up two hits. Gave up a run, but doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, I think that those uniforms are ugly as sin that they were wearing. Yeah, I didn't care for them either. It, they just seem like these weird, like, sort of, like, meshy in between warm-up jerseys and not known exactly. Yeah. It just seemed like they... I, and not to criticize the designer, I'm sure he had a thousand different people in their ears trying to tell them what exactly to do. Of course. But it ended up being, like, uh, a mushy, you know, in-between garbage. It just it just Ugh. didn't look like it went anywhere. I said it looked like, like something a rapper would wear in 2002, like urban camo. Yeah. I hated it. Yeah. I hated it. Everything was like real silky at Ugh. the time. You yeah. Know. And also, like, dude, the fun part of the All Star game is like that they wear their uniforms. Like, those uniforms, they should be wearing those during the Derby and stuff. Yeah, I like that. Not there. And then they wear their uniforms on the day of the All Star game. I can see that. The Home Run Derby, where they can have those particular uniforms, advertise whatever you want to do. But, like, yeah, the All Star game itself seems to be a time where you're just representing your city and your team. Yeah. And seeing like someone in your uniform run out on the field, it's like, oh, oh, there, there he is, there he is. There's my guy. Yeah, as opposed to, oh, look at that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's how he looks in that weird uniform <laughs> that we're never gonna see ever again. Not ever again. Yeah, there's just nothing. You feel nothing when you look at those uniforms. I felt empty. You know, I felt. Yeah, you know, I felt used, honestly. Yeah. Drained. You could do hats. Just you can do hats. Have yeah. them wear a uniform and come up with uh, a type of hat that you can wear. Yeah. I thought that the seafoam green was foul. People like that for some reason. I was like, it looks like fucking Gerber peas, like Gerber baby food. Yeah, it was It was not cool. It was ugly. So that's a bummer because, like, uh, last year's All-Star kit was terrible, very boring, just, like, white and black with gold. And then the one before in Colorado was just fucking trash. Man, too. I'll be honest, I cannot remember past this year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's mm -hmm. a good goal to have is not remember prior years. I wonder if I got the uh, All-Star now. There was one. Uh, There's your 2015 All-Star game. There's hat. that one. But, that one's cool. But it, it's not the, I have the other one upstairs, but it actually has like the, the lines where the everyone just had like their Oh, logo. I have. So uh, I went to the Authentic shop yeah. like second week of the season and they had a Mariners one out. I yeah. got it for 15 bucks. So I think those were pretty cool. Those yes. are something that you can like incorporate across like all sorts, uh, you know, the logos and stuff like that. Agreed. So, and it, yeah, you don't have to make a, a piss ugly uniform. Yeah. But. And now I'm to the point where I could give two shits about the All-Star game itself. Yeah. 
I love the Home Run Derby. I love the Futures game. The Celebrity Softball game is fun. It's always fun to watch JoJo Siwa almost fall. <laughs> but I am so bored with just, like, AL versus NL. And, like, it's a low-scoring affair. It's like, there, and there's no stakes anymore. It's just very, I'm just, like, bored. They need to do some new shit. I do like that they're having pe more people mic'd up. And I think it could be an opportunity for them to incorporate some of the stuff that they're doing, like in the minors, with mm -hmm. challenging balls and strikes. Some sort of things uh, where it's a tad different uh, that, yeah, it does get you more excited. Mm -hmm. Because people, I mean, pitchers are just going to go, like, just pitch an inning. They're going to have, yep. like, a pitch limit. Uh, no one's going to go full out on defense for the most part. You know, uh, batters might come to swing. But, yeah, it's not going to be as competitive as it was yeah. years in the past. And, it, honestly, it probably... I don't know, it really shouldn't be because yeah. you don't want to have anybody do anything like in incredibly unfortunate. Yeah. But it's, it's still a competitive game to a degree. Yeah, you don't want another Ray Fossey incident. Yeah, <laughs> you see it all that image all the time. He tried to pull up, but. Yeah, yeah. Pete pulling up. He never pulled yeah, out either. Pull uh, <laughs> we knew that. Yeah, we both, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, The Athletic said, uh, had some really good ideas. They posted, like, what if you did USA versus the world? I was like, they've done that with the Futures game. Um, a skills competition, which I've been saying that since we, I started this podcast. That'd be really cool. That'd be sick. They used to do it in the 80s. When they just like, uh, you know, have like catchers like just time like their throws. Yeah. So you can have like accuracy contest bunts. They do that it's in Japan. Japan, that's so Ooh, sick. Yeah, watch a bunt contest in Japan. You will be hooked for a while. <laughs> Dude, it's like top golf for bunting. Yeah, it's the same sort of appreciation you have for like we see like someone do like a power wash, like a driveway. It feels oh. that sort of satisfying. It's like, oh, that was perfect. <laughs> yeah, that. Um, it, you know, like, and then shorts throws short stops home, like having certain targets from for like outfielders to throw from like center field to home and all that stuff would be sick. And then the one thing that they said that I thought would be hilarious, but I don't know if the players union would do it and I don't know if MLB would do it, but I would be on board. Banana ball. Yeah, there's no way they would. But that would be awesome. <laughs> It'd be sick. Yeah. That would be probably the most watched all-star kind of event that that's out there. I mean, like the closest coolest thing that we have to make the all-star game cool in any sport, I think is uh, the NBA. Yeah. Where so like they play for a certain amount of time and then they cap it at like you have to get the first team to this many points wins. Okay. Uh, and it makes it like really exciting. That's nice. And for anyone that really doesn't know, it's the Savannah Bananas. If you haven't seen that, they're all over like uh, social media. But uh, the banana ball yeah. they play is wild. Did you see the dude on the trampoline? Uh, In center I, field. I don't think so. Dude, so a guy drill. So they had they brought out a trampoline. There was a guy jumping. Mm -hmm. on it and then uh <clears throat> batter hit it and it went to the left center field gap he jumped off the trampoline ran and picked up and grabbed it and threw it back in oh that's awesome it was so cool i think that it's had one recently where uh they had if a, a player catches a foul ball it's still an out and i think they ended yeah. the game with that yeah and i think they had the fan run in the field with them yep it's just bananas <laughs> hey. like, the game uh but dude that'd be something like uh, pretty cool like it's kind of like uh you know, maybe host like some sort of like Harlem. It's like a Harlem Globetrotter situation almost. Exactly, because they're barnstorming too. Mm -hmm. They're like traveling around. Yeah, that's and, awesome. And like the tickets sell out in two minutes. I would love to. They're playing it. They they pl I think they played in Indianapolis or are going to play in Indianapolis. Yeah. And tickets were just gone in two minutes. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Um, but yeah, something along those lines to where uh, they can play some version of competitive baseball that's also entertaining and you know a stress release form as well yeah well i, I mean baseball itself is entertaining but like in a do you want to do something different it's the all-star game you mm -hmm. want to get like every set of eyeballs on it as you can and that's yeah. how you do it yeah i mean you could even fucking show like uh savannah bananas game but like before or something yeah. that'd be pretty wild but yeah like, i do like the skills test because the home run derby that's a skill set right there you're hitting home runs so yeah why not do the other skills fold it all in Mm -hmm. I'm in. Sign me up. That's what we need to do next. Um, and before we went into this All-Star game, um, the Reds lost two out of three in Milwaukee. Yeah, that was a bummer. But uh, I was thinking about it. I almost think it's kind of better that they they ended the you know the pre-All-Star, the first half, uh, with a loss. Like a bad taste in their mouth. Yeah? I think that might make them a bit more uh, hungry coming back and realizing, you know, not everything is set in stone. Even if you are having a magical season... 
stuff's going to kick you in the butt and bring you right back down to reality. So I think that might turn out to be better for him. That's what I'm telling you. I this. love that. Dude, I love that take. For real. Because then it's you're going in with, you're coming back with a chip on your shoulder mm. and you're at home. Yeah, you still got something to prove. Yeah, and you're like, dude, we just went to your house and you, you know, we lost by a combined five runs. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna shut out. Yeah. We're gonna kick your dick in. Mm -hmm. Our rotations reset. We're rested. Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna come back strong and uh, have something to prove. Yeah, and then they face Corbin Burns again. I haven't looked at the rest of the matchups for it, but um, man, uh, Andrew Abbott finally got his big shellacking. Yeah, he did. Uh, just wasn't as crisp as he was leaving stuff up. But uh, in his in the post game uh, conference, it seemed like he kind of, you know, uh, took responsibility from that stuff. So even like when he was licking his wounds, it did seem like he was very uh, present and aware of what the uh, the issues were. So yeah, I mean, and looking at his his uh, strike zone plot, a lot of stuff right right down the middle of the plate, right in the sweet spot. And was barely dancing around the corners with his fastball, so he wasn't fooling anybody. No, yeah, just leaving way, uh, too many things just right there. Yeah, yeah it's a bummer, and his changeup just didn't work. Uh, didn't work that day. So yeah, it'll happen. Yeah, I, you know, he the, it, he finally needed this one. You know. Mm -hmm. It's a bummer, dude, and we're gonna get to it later. But I mean, in some of these pitchers that you know tend to do well, it seems like the Reds don't show up and support nearly as much as when we got <laughs> Luke this, Weaver. Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck? And Corbin Burns also just had himself a nice day, too. So getting runs against him is always huge. But um, <clears throat> And then from then on out, after Abbott left, you know, the bullpen only gave up one run. And it was Fernando Cruz. And yeah. anything of work. So, like, it's always good to, like, see the pen keep holding it down. And they did the whole series. Yeah, it's great. Uh, it seems like we keep hearing... Uh, fewer and fewer things about the bullpen, which means they're doing great. Yeah. You know, we have, just don't have much to say about them, which is a good thing. It's a great thing, dude. It's like a, it's like a good expo at a restaurant. You know, when you're, if your expo's good, you don't even think about them. You know, it's like, whatever, everything's running smoothly. Yeah. But then as soon as something fucks up and it's the expo, it's the end of the world. Yeah, my goddamn branch is in here. Did I order celery? What the fuck? I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm not even supposed to be here. <laughs> um... And, and Joey Votto had himself a weekend. I mean, he had, what, two homers over the series or three? Oh, yeah, I think at least two. And I remember the one, one. that he had. I mean, this, man, he is looking so good at the plate. And they're not gimme home runs, dude. No. I mean, he's just fucking planting them in the outfield. And, dude, we talked shit for the week before. Like, Joey looked bad. We're, like, concerned. Mm -hmm. So we just have to keep talking shit. And then he'll turn it around and just go on these epic tears. I say it was more of a, a polite realization of it. Just seemed like Vada was looking uh, off. I think uh, we were saying like his timing yeah. or just looked a little tired. So uh, definitely not as uh, harsh, harsh of criticism yeah. as what I've given to like Will Benson or Will Myers before. Sure. <laughs> well, we were we were right with with both Wills. Yeah. And then the Reds did the right thing with both of them. To think about how crazy this is, Joey's played in 17 games, and he has seven homers. And he's 39. Yeah, he's <laughs> looking great, man. He, it just seems to be like, uh, especially like the you know the first couple games he came up, amazing. And then yeah. uh, the last series with Milwaukee, amazing. Like yeah. he, He's on it. He seems locked in. He seems like a great version of Joey Votto. Mm -hmm. so, um, he was a world beater in Washington. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited that now we got a little bit of a break. Hopefully, we can collect himself a little more and come back just as uh, you know energized again against Milwaukee. So hopefully, they can come uh, out against the series yeah. and be just as dominant. I well, hope so. I mean, Votto. Votto, anyway. Yeah. Um, and then you had the next night. Uh, that's they won that game that Luke Weaver pitched three and two thirds innings, six hits, five earned runs, two walks, one K, gave up two dingers. He fucking sucks, dude. Yeah, man, and uh, he just keeps throwing way too many damn pitches. Like he just finds himself even when he gets ahead in the count, he finds a way to go full. It just seems like he just doesn't have that killer instinct to really know how to lock it in. And yep. th for whatever reason, the Reds seem to play well offensively when he's in there. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's a very uncomfortable watch. Well, he doesn't have that strong out pitch. No, he, he doesn't have, like, uh, I mean, 
batters are not swinging and missing his pitches too often. Oh, no. And I guess ready? Are you ready to hear these rates? Let's do it. Um, so his four-seamer, which, you know, his CSW percentage was 25%. His changeup was 30.8%. Cutter was 7.1%. Curveball twenty three point five percent with called swing uh, called strike whiff rate overall with twenty two point four percent. So that means twenty two point four percent of his pitches are either called strikes or a whiff. That's shit. Yeah, that's not really getting it done, uh, and his accuracy is not anything. So he just has so many holes. Mm. Uh, so hopefully. You know, yeah. I mean, Luke, I'm sure you're a great guy, but uh, damn, I cannot no. wait to get like some of these pictures healthy and back up. No because, shit. Jesus, dude. Dude, look at this shit, too. His hard contact rate on his fastball is 50%. And that's, it, that's just dog shit. Yeah, and when he's throwing that almost half the time, that that's that's horrible. I, I'm curious what his averages are with people, because it's just, it just seems like he gets squared up so frequently oh yeah he's probably got to be i wonder where he is in the league on like what percentage he's in on on exit velocity which i can look it up on baseball prospectus but i'm we also know it's, not, fucking it's good. not good he's got to be in the bottom bottom fifth of the league so i i mean <sighs> you the solution is eventually going to be healthy or traded for but at the, in the meantime when he's out there, the Reds fucking score runs for him. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, I might be jumping around, but uh, in fact, I am. Uh, what about trades? Do you see the Reds actually going for a starting pitcher? Or do you think they're going to be adding uh, at the trade deadline? Or do you think they're just going to wait out the uh, the injuries? You can't, you can't wait out the injuries. You need to start getting some separation. And when you have the schedule coming up and everything... Um, I think that they are, and I've got some guys that we'll talk about that okay. I think that they should target. So, yeah. um, so uh, also, um, Ellie De La Cruz stole home. Yeah, man. That... He stole for the cycle. Yeah, dude, that was I, I'm clapping in my basement by myself. I'm freaking out, like just watching the Reds. This is the most exciting baseball I've ever watched. That that was one of the coolest moments I've ever yeah uh, witnessed as a Reds fan. I was walking. We were walking from getting drinks to the venue, and I was watching it. Then I put it away because we were walking, and I felt a buzz. And I picked it up, and I just read the update that just says uh, Red score run. Ellie De La Cruz steals home. I went, what the. F fuck yeah and then i immediately go to twitter and i was like jesus christ dude whoa that was almost even cooler than like i mean when you think like the steal the home uh stealing a home you think of like the pitcher you know he's, he's set batter's already on third yeah. and then he just does a blind steal this was almost more exciting because it almost like he willed it into existence yeah he like um the third base coach like went, went after ali stole third didn't give him like a five or anything. He just kind of got a little bit of distance between him and everyone else. Yep. And it's like the play was still continuing. And the, that sort of a baseball IQ is thrilling. Yeah. And, and just seeing that, like I was watching it on TV and just seeing what was happening. And I was like, oh! <laughs> and just, I'm just applauding. And that yeah. Was, amazing. Amazing. Dude, he steals second. They just give him third. He gets up. He takes his helmet off. Adjusts his hair, watches the pitcher be mad, and he just went, bye. Yeah, man. God, I can't believe, like, I just can't believe everything we're seeing from this kid. I can't believe we're seeing it. I can't believe he's a red. I can't yeah, believe no. there's still endless amounts of future with his career. Uh, you know, it, it's it's great. It, it's so fun yeah. watching uh, these young dudes with, with such high ceilings. And shout out John Sadak. Man, he's calling such a nice <laughs> yeah. uh, season for the Reds. All these great calls. Yeah, and like yesterday, he was on Rich Eisen's show, and I watch Rich every day. I love Rich. He's like my one of my favorite voices in sports, and he had him on talking about how great his calls have been. I'm like, I'm so glad he's getting this national attention because like Sadak was great last year with a terrible team, and mm -hmm. now he's got like one of the most young, exciting teams in baseball, and he has the voice and the energy and the charisma to match it. It's it's awesome. Yeah, he's a creative dude. I love hearing how he, you know, summarizes like what's happening. Oh, and sneaking in every little movie reference. Yeah. And stuff. Oh my god. I need to watch Ted Lasso. I haven't really. I know he's done. He's some... done, done, done stuff of that. He did an Always Sunny reference. Um, yeah, he's just. 
he's awesome. He's great. And I'm just so happy for him that he gets to go to work every day and have the most fun. Yeah, and that's great for us to get to watch too and listen to. Yeah. It. It's really fun. So yeah, his call was just incredible. Mm. It was just so it was just so pitch perfect. So I just wanted to give that shout out to him because he's killing it. Yeah. Um so um yeah. Uh, Luke Weaver sucks. We covered that. Mm-hmm. Um, the bullpen again at that that game was nails. Mm-hmm. No runs after Luke Weaver went out there and just was trash. Dude, so so critical for yeah. uh, how the Reds have been doing this season. Dude, it's crazy how like, and I'm really enjoying watching David Bell deploy Lucas Sims. He's your second best arm. Mm-hmm. He's not your closer. He's letting Diaz be the closer and like, hey, you're pitching this one inning or one and a third, one to two thirds. But when it's like, we need outs and we need a touch of length, it's been Lucas Sims and he's he's had a couple couple bumps, but overall he's been nails. Yeah, I feel really confident when he comes in and I think uh, David Bell feels that as well. Mm-hmm. And Sims, I think he's stepping into that role. Yep. So uh, that's great to see. Him, Buck Farmer, and mm-hmm. um, Santian are like, are your, I think you have become just your high leverage dudes. And I have no problem with them being going out there and being like, I have the most utmost confidence in these dudes. Mm-hmm. So um, Ian Jabot's had some, had, had some moments in the sun. He's also been uh, inconsistent. So. Um, so seeing him early and also give you length is nice too. Um, but yeah, man. And then to close it out, <coughs> excuse me, to close it out, the Wade Miley revenge game, dude. Guy yeah. went out there and pitched like six innings, gave up three hits, no runs. Dude, he looked great. He looked like a pitcher. That, <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, that was great getting to watch that. I mean, I we fucking lost, but dude, that was <laughs> that. That was a great example of how yeah. to uh, be a couple steps ahead of the batter and keep them off balance, dude. Yeah. He's not blowing them away with speed or any sort of like extremely uh you know dynamic breaking pitches he just yeah. knows how to pitch yeah he's just he's like i throw a cutter inside on lefties and i work away from righties mm. that's it i got two pitches and that's how we do it mm. I'm like okay old school baseball dude yeah yeah um so i it, it sucked to see him go. He was hurt last year, and then he's been good good this year. Uh, Wayne Miley is like Star Trek movies every other year. <laughs> They're like good. Uh, I said the same thing about Castellanos. I was like, because remember he was bad in 2020, and then 21 he was nails. Um, mm-hmm. And Lively coming back off the IL with the pec injury, giving you five and two thirds, giving you length, four hits, one or run, two walks, five Ks, like. Extremely serviceable. Did that great. Yeah, he did really well. He almost got him, uh, you know, into the seventh. Uh, <laughs> I thought he was throwing a real nice game, uh, similar sort of, you know, wily sort of fashion, just just trying to outsmart the hitters and yeah. a lot of finesse stuff. Um, and great, yeah, great selection and pitch mix. Like you see his curveball, he threw it ten times. Uh, called striker whiff percentage on that was fifty percent. That's great. Yeah, huge. Deploying those pitches when need be, so he, he has an out pitch, um, and again, very similar to Wiley. He's not uh, some guy that has very dominant stuff, but he just knows how to throw. Exactly. And coming off that injury, that's that's a huge thing. So I think he's going to be uh, a, a great, great uh, help with the, the Reds when they do get all their starters back. He's going to be someone that he could fill in. He could be a guy that comes out of the pen. Mm-hmm. This is. I really like what Lively's doing. I do, too. I think he's you're going to be, say you do have a playoff rotation, he's the first dude out of the pen giving you a little length. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but sadly, the Reds just couldn't get it done against Miley. They just ran. It felt like they, once they got the lefty out, they just, and they got to their pen, they just ran out of time before Devin Williams happened, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. So. Ran out of innings. Yeah. You just ran out of outs, dude. Um, so looking at the, the first half, well, the first half and, and some and as a whole, um, this offense is so gross, dude. Just looking at this giant chart and looking at TJ, like you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dudes with an uh, above 350 on base percentage for the season. That's crazy. And they're super, super young. I mean, all these dudes are, like, in their early, mid-20s, a lot of them. Yeah. 
and they are adjusting so well to Major League Baseball. This is very, very cool. Yeah, and that's why, I mean, that's the success of this offense, is, you know, aside from homering in, like, 22 straight games, which, what a hell of a stretch. That's great. That Which, like, when we were talking about this team needs power, they 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 stumbled into it and found it. That, that's a very good analogy to, like, the or, uh, story of, like, the Reds' duality of being uh, not necessarily the home run hitting team because they don't have any designated like big boppers for the most part yeah but it spreads throughout there's so many guys doing different things every night and they're able to you know string together 22 games with home runs so but it's nuts. not you know from uh two one three individuals it's throughout you know one through nine yeah exactly and it's just whose night is it gonna be you yeah. know um when you got will benson batting in like the nine hole a lot i mean that's crazy it's nuts and Will Benson, since you know, I mean, I was looking. There he is, uh, 291, 385, 496, um, with a weighted runs created plus of one thirty three. Dude, you you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dudes that are above a hundred weighted runs created plus. Man, I am so looking forward to the next Reds baseball game. This this yeah. sucks. We got to wait a handful of days here. <laughs> I know we have we have uh, we have this. So it's Wednesday. We're, we're recording, releasing Thursday. So basically, we have two more sleeps, mm-hmm. and then it's back to the ballpark. There we go. I'm going Friday and Sunday. Oh, I'm so jealous. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be uh, out west, but uh, I'm going to be tuning in. Yeah, just have it on your phone. Just do the thing and be like, oh yeah, nature's nice. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, Glacier mm. National Park, just checking out my phone. There's no reception here. What's the, what's the fucking Wi-Fi for Yellowstone? Hey, Yeti, what's the red score? Mm. <laughs> hey, but found Sasquatch. Cool, ask him if he's got Wi-Fi in his hut. <laughs> Says it's a real pitcher stool going on right now. We got to follow him back to his cave. <laughs> Cruising along. Bring carrots, put them in your butt. <laughs> Don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. <laughs> Only give in to the squatch. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, it's like, and Nick Senzel murdering lefties, and it's like, they have, they've got the deployment down and the rotation of if there's a lefty, if there's a righty. Um, and it's nice to see that TJ Friel has been left in when there's a lefty because mm-hmm. I think that his tr- it, he's like, come on, I'm your everyday center fielder. I don't need to be platooned. Yeah, uh, I think he has pretty decent splits, and it's giving him experience to, uh, you know, bat against a lefty when he's going to have to face a lefty uh, later on in the year or yeah. uh, after that. Yeah, it's not like you're hiding a crazy hole. It, it, so, yeah. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's just like looking at this in the depth, and then and it just sucks then looking at, like, Luke Maley and Kirk Casale, who you need these guys there. I get it. Mm-hmm. And I love both of them, and I love what they do defensively, but one, you've got a Kirk Casale bat 169 and Luke Maley 217 is um, not great. Yeah, and this isn't like the age of catchers being acceptable to just like not be able to produce. There's a lot of great hitting catchers out there, and um, yeah, Adley Rushman, the, the whole run derby, dude. Yeah, hitting from both sides of the plate. That's never been done. Yeah, and uh, Diaz, the uh, Elias Diaz. Elias Diaz, yeah. Yeah. Um, MVP. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, uh, I've got him on my fantasy team. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know the tale of Elias Diaz. So like. You've got Tyler Stevenson, who has been getting hot, but overall on the year, uh, 254, 340, 373, with a weighted runs created plus of 91. Um, but here's where it gets a little... He's got a negative 7 defensive rating. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's uh, the catch That's... position. There's some... Uh, we can make some improvements there with I mean yeah. I, I like all those guys uh, there's definitely some uh, things to be discussed about sure. and like we've talked to man like this is still a big development year for him absolutely it's like his first full season behind the dish and you've got more of a deeper rotation with Luke and Kurt but there's got to be a point to where you get to get like you gotta cut the cord you can't have three catch. We've been saying you can't have three catchers all year, yet they've been fucking doing it. So, Mm -hmm. um, dude, I I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's just cool and looking and seeing all these bright spots, and then it's like you get there and you're like, you, you have pinpointed the hole. 
Yeah, there's some glaring uh, discrepancies with the numbers when you got them all uh, lined up next to each other. So Yeah. Um, looking at the starting pitching, your team ERA from everyone who has started, 5.69. Yikes. Mm -hmm. That's not getting it done. No. Um, and you've got multiple pitchers. So... Brand, uh, Brandon Williamson, 5.21 ERA. Graham Ashcraft, 6.28 ERA. Albeit, he has had better starts, and he did have an absolutely awful May. Mm. But um, who else here? Ben Lively, 4.08. That's serviceable. Luke Weaver, rocking a flat seven. There you go, dog. Uh, Brett Kennedy, 7.20. Yikes. Yikes. Poor Levi Stout with a 12.86 ERA. <laughs> yeah. Because remember he got shelled versus the Rays. Uh -huh. And they just let they just kept eating. But like that's um that's fucking bad. Yeah, I mean there's definitely some goiters here uh, standing out that are really uh pussy and ugly looking. Yeah. But uh yeah, there are some bright spots, but yet yeah, uh that is something that if if you're an organization looking at this, you're like, okay, this has to improve. Yeah. Uh, if you want to be competitive and you want to win in the postseason, that's your that is your glaring weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I'm looking at the relievers here, the, the team ERA is 3.86, but I feel like that's inflated by dudes like Alec Mills, who has an 18 ERA and got shelled for one inning. Yeah. Um, and some others like Randy Wynn as or Joe Kunal's got an 8.10 ERA and he got sent back down like. Or designated for assignment. There's like dudes on here where you're like, you can pinpoint and say this would be lower if this didn't happen. Yeah, if you could just take like say like the top eight arms in the bullpen that we use, mm -hmm. that number would drop significantly. Yeah, because we are in, you know, we're kind of shaking it down and figuring out, okay, who are the go-to arms in the pen? Yeah, and I think we really are starting to get in like a familiar, you know, setup. Yep. With that, I feel like that's mostly concrete. There's maybe one or two slots that you can rotate in and out, but it's getting that that situation is getting better with people coming back, like Tony mm -hmm. Santini and hopefully soon with TJ Antone because that would be a huge weapon to be able to come out of the bullpen. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to have to piecemeal stuff together at the uh, end of games. No. So coming up, you've got three at home versus the Brewers, four at home versus a very mediocre Giants team, mm -hmm. and then three at home against a young, good Arizona club. That's gonna be fun. All this is all gonna be really fun. The Brewers. That's gonna be so intense. This is this this. You are now you are now in playoff baseball mode, brother. Absolutely. Because then you're then you follow it up by going back to Milwaukee for three, and then you go out to LA for three. You could either here get some separation from the Brewers because you're playing them six times in a month, or you're gonna that gap's gonna dwindle and you're gonna start losing games against good to average ball clubs. Yeah, this is a really make or break situation here. You're either going to be setting the pace or playing catch up. Yep. This is, uh, oh, I love it. This is so fun. This is great. <laughs> yeah. This is great. We can talk about this stuff. Right? You know, this is competitive playoff esque baseball. When we started this year, I was like, man, we're going to have to like make segments and like have goofy games and like do shit because it's going to be a rough season. And now we're after the all star, we're at the all star break talking like these are make or break games to I win know. the division. It's like fucking thank God finally. Yeah, it's great, dude. It's awesome. <laughs> it's fucking great. So here's the thing. Depending on how this stretch goes, and it's a tough one. That is what you're gonna. That's gonna dictate what the Reds do in the market. With August first being your trade deadline, mm -hmm. you have if you start winning and you're consistent and you're starting to get some separation and you know you you think you are a Lucas Giolito, a Dylan Cease away, you you kind you kind of have to pull the trigger. Okay. If you start dropping a little bit and it's start and you're like starting to fall behind. You're still focused on the future, and you don't want to give up a guy like CES. Then you don't do it. Mm -hmm. It's all about what happens here. Yeah, because it's, it's not going to get any easier. No, uh, there are so many things. I mean, I wish I could look into a crystal ball and tell you like what outcomes are going to be, but it's really going to be dictated by uh, you know most of the players on the field and also uh, the people who are you know spending the money and. 
how do they feel it's going to be best uh, or used most efficiently. Right. Because uh, you could, you know, you don't want to give up a lot because you got, you know, some of these X factors with these young players that could mm-hmm. develop into being, uh, you know, franchise athletes. Yeah. So you, you don't want to uh, give up too much because, you know, nothing's certain in baseball when you make these trades. So it's it's really yeah. uh, exciting and also, man, I... Uh, <laughs> kind of pins and needles yeah, to see what's going to be happening also, in the next few weeks. And also, there's nothing certain saying that we'll be able to, that this can be replicated again next year, albeit this is a young club, mm-hmm. but we don't know what next year holds and like, it, the is the window opening and will it stay open? Or is it right now open and it's propped up by a paint stir and it's going to snap and close? Exactly. We're, we aren't entirely sure. I mean, these are still young kids. Uh, mm-hmm. They're still developing and learning. Uh, so we aren't quite sure, you know, yeah. the trajectory of their careers, but it does seem like the door has been blown open far <laughs> wider and earlier than what we anticipated. Like so this might be the time to start, you know, pushing chips in, yep. but you got to really make sure you know uh, what you got mm-hmm. and the value of yeah. things. And you know what? Depending on who is and isn't sellers, August is looks a lot easier because you've got... Full, uh, you end against the Cubs of July, and then uh, August first, second, third, you're at, and you're so you got a four spot at the Cubs. Mm-hmm. Then three at home against the Nationals, three at home against the Marlins, at Pittsburgh for three, two at home against the Guards, and three at home against the Jays. And then you follow that up with three at the Angels, four at Arizona, mm-hmm. and then three at San Francisco. Okay. So you have a little bit of a softer landing compared to the rest of July. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's similar. It's like you've got the Diamondbacks in there, Brewers, but like you don't have the Brewers again. You don't um, you can play the A's. Yeah, and the Pirates are most likely going to be sellers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Cubs should be sellers. If I was in their situation with a lot of veterans on one-year contracts, I'm moving Bellinger. If I'm not going to extend Stroman, I'm moving him. Hopefully to the Reds. That'd be cool. Yeah, that's an option. Um, so the Angels most likely going to be sellers if Mike Trout doesn't come back quick enough and they're going to trade off Shohei. Like, there's a lot there um, that you got. Like, you're like, okay, I can feel I can feel more comfortable in August than I do at the end of July and your post-trade deadline. So it's like, this is what we're stuck with. So, um, but moving forward, I think you want to keep your eyes on the Mets and the Padres. Mm -hmm. If they fucking tank and they they keep tanking, uh, Blake Snell is going to become available. Mm -hmm. Josh Hader is going to become available. Um, Scherzer already said he would waive his his no-trade clause. And I would have to assume Verlander would do that as well, because yeah. he's, you know, they're both in their 40s and they want to win. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, my wish list would be I don't, I don't know how much it'll be, how much it'll cost to get Max Scherzer. I don't think it's going to be crazy. Um, and I Verlander has another year on his deal, so I don't know how much that's going to be too. Um, Lucas Giolito is a rental too. Dylan Cease would be a two-year plus commitment, so that. Dylan Cease is the one that's going to cost you the most, but I don't mm. think – I think we genuinely just need a rental. Yeah, I, I don't want to see us giving up much at all, um, but I do want to see us getting someone that could essentially allow the bullpen to not eat up a bunch of innings. So someone that can go seven. I just want to see someone – whether it's a veteran arm, someone we can get for cheap, a rental – um, Lance Lynn would be dope. That yeah, he's a great. He could do that. He's a veteran pitcher that mm-hmm. knows how to get you know to, mm-hmm. uh, to that depth in the ball game. Yeah, I'd love to see Zach Granke. I don't think that's uh, exactly as feasible, but um, it, that would be a fun guy to see on the bench with Votto and some of these young guys uh, helping to you know further their careers. Yeah. But uh, I think it's going to be more of a a rental situation. Yeah, I think because you have got the guy you just drafted. And basically, and you've got Lodolo and Green coming back. Yes. So you just need one more arm for the rest of this year. And then, and that's not going to cost you a whole lot, but then you go into the offseason, no matter what happens if we make the playoffs or not, you go into free agency going, all right, I can sign Stroman. Yeah. It'll only cost me money. 
Mm -hmm. I can sign a veteran pitcher to also help anchor this rotation, and I don't have to give up prospects. It won't be as desperate of a situation, and nope. it also, I think, in kind of real time, it gives the players a bit more of a relaxation to know, like, uh, okay, they aren't shipping people around. They believe yep. in us. We believe in ourselves. Uh, yeah. You know, that'll give them more momentum to go forward, I feel. But, Agreed. You know, yeah. And uh, the, in the draft, we, we'll probably get into more next week when I gather more information um, and do some research for myself. Rhett Louder. Great fucking move. Great pickup in the spot that they were at. He's got three quality pitches, both all of them above average. ACC pitcher of the year back-to-back. -back. Yeah. And incredible hair. Great hair. Get along well with India. Yeah. Uh, from next, <laughs> same locker, same hair regiment uh, condition. Uh, get them on the same conditioner condition. Yeah, they can, you know, they'll both braid it. They know how to braid it. Yeah, they get split ends together. Uh, <laughs> I know about that, baby. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I don't know about split ends. No, great, no I got to get it trimmed, though. It start, it's, see, it's a little greasy, so it starts to twirl up. It's because mm -hmm. I need to, to sh shower. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, I'm super psyched on Rhett Lauer. The reason he dropped to where we were is because of some health concerns, but I'm the overall, I mean, it's a fucking college pitcher. They all have health concerns. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried. Yeah, it's our, he's a child. He'll be fine. <laughs> He'll be fine, yeah. yeah. He'll so, vape. He'll be cool. Dude, right. love to vape. Yeah, he vapes uh, <laughs> in the 99th percentile. <laughs> Dude, the spin rate on his clouds are nuts. <laughs> He's an airbender with the vape smoke. <laughs> with the vape smoke. Don't have a lot of smoke. Um, so, yeah, moving forward, like, I feel really good about the second half. I'm just concerned about this stretch coming up. I just really want them to become home and be world beaters, dude. Yeah, uh, my main anxieties are the bullpen getting gassed because of the starting pitching not going deep enough. Right. Um, and hoping that everyone can, continues to play pretty much mm -hmm. at the same level that they've been and not, you know, getting gassed as well. Because, I mean, some right. of these guys still playing 162, that, that's a lot of games for some of these guys. Yeah, and also, man, if Connor Phillips has like four more good outings, mm -hmm. he could be up here. Yeah. Another, I think he's a lefty. I think he's a lefty. It doesn't matter. He's another guy who could contribute, and that's not a trade. That is just a promotion. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's round turn and head for home, shall we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you got? I'm going to be in Glacier National Park. <laughs> it's a BYOB event. <laughs> Bring all the critters. Me talking to all the wildlife out there. Don't be going out there. <laughs> On vacation, going to go out west, get in touch with myself, get grounded. Touch yourself nice. Touch myself uh, <laughs> in a park, in a state park, and then going to uh, Yellowstone as well. You'll love Yellowstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what, uh, oh, did you, uh, Harlan Williams, did you see he recorded a special in, in the desert? Oh, that one years ago? It was just him? That was fucking rad, dude. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. That could be you at Yellowstone. Just I'll do it. yelling at bison? Yeah, as long as you get that t-shirt he had. That was a pretty cool t-shirt. <laughs> if only. <laughs> if only. If only. Um, I don't have shit on the calendar. Come see me at the ballpark. If you find me, I'll buy you a beer. I'm bringing that back because I'm at so many. Nice. So I'm like, hey, find me and I'll buy you a beer. And I've done it twice so far this season. Cool. So, yeah, man. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and update FC Cincinnati came from behind a win. How about that? Nice. Cool. I bet on the draw again, but win is better than winning $12. So yeah. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I'll take it. Um, check out intheclutch.com for all your MLBPA Ellie needs. Dude, this is sick. Um, we're also going to be dropping a special MLBPA Cincinnati design printed on comfort colors. So definitely check that out. Uh, use promo code NASTYBOYS, all caps, to get 10% off. And also have some pretty cool Savannah Bananas gear. So check nice. that out too. Uh, thanks to Sports Drink for being a coffee shop in Louisiana and letting us and hosting our podcast on your server. Um, and uh, thank you for doing this as always. Anytime. Oh, great. And thank you for watching and listening. And as always, go Red Legs. Go Red Legs.